Hey guys, in this video we're going to be checking out the Marvel Legends. This is Fantastic Four member Invisible Woman along with Herbie. Invisible Woman, whose real name is Susan Storm Richards, first debuted back in Fantastic Four number one back in 1961. Herbie, on the other hand, which stands for Humanoid Experimental Robot B-Type Integrated Electronics, debuted a little bit later in Fantastic Four number 209. So how tall are the figures exactly? Invisible Woman stands a little over six inches tall. Herbie, on the other hand, is a little bit different. He stands exactly six inches tall, but if you technically don't include the display stand he stands on, he's closer to about four inches. They don't come with really any accessories except for one. Invisible Woman comes with one extra hand, which has a slight translucency to it that looks like it's been washed with additional black paint. Um, the term sloppy may resonate a little bit over the course of this review, as unfortunately, while I think Herbie is pretty good, Invisible Woman I find is a little on the sloppy side, and it starts with the interchangeable hand. While the hand is decent enough, I feel like the slight translucency to the black almost reads a little bit messier and just clumsily added rather than any sort of concise uh, you know, intentions. It does have a clear peg, so I can only tell you that you have to be a little bit careful that this clear plastic doesn't break on you over the course of time. And unfortunately, it looks like her finger uh, looks like it's slightly bent getting it out of packaging. Uh, the defaulted hand on, on the other hand is actually closer to just a solid black, whereas the other side, they've done this really neat uh, translucency which starts clear and works its way up until it eventually gradually transitions to a nice blue. The blue will be a topic of discussion in a second but let's have a look at her face. Her face is actually really nice. She reminds me of somebody and somebody is gonna say Invisible Woman. No it's not Invisible Woman but she reminds me of some actress and I'm drawing an absolute blank. Maybe somebody can tell me down below but the eyes are nicely uh, painted she has a very narrow face with very high cheekbones. The hair is sculpted also quite well too. Face overall and hair overall is pretty clean. Pretty well done. I quite like the choice of blue that they made use of for Invisible Woman. Unfortunately, very haphazardly added. Uh, in some areas, such as the upper torso, is generally clean. For some reason, it just doesn't look like it, it's the same color as the lower torso as this could perhaps be plastic and the, the top portion be more paint. But you can see like it, it doesn't look like it's completely finished in some areas. It looks like almost one giant fingerprint has removed a little bit of the paint right around the Fantastic Four logo on her chest. When you get down to her legs, however, I mean, it, again, it's clean here because it looks like it's probably plastic. Here, on the other hand, not only do you get two different varying colors of the same blue, but on the other side here, it looks like, and it even feels like, paint has been either removed or hasn't been given a second coat of paint. I really don't know what happened here, but it's just a train wreck when it comes to a paint application. Like, you can even see where it just looks like the paint is not even completely covering the leg. It's just this kind of splotchy looking efforts at painting this figure. Um, the black does it a little bit better of a job, but there are areas in which the black just doesn't look like it's finished. Again, up here, looks like the paint's just not completely covering the figure. Um, if you look at the back here, again, all this disastrous paint application. I just don't know why it is so unfinished. It looks like it just didn't, they didn't do a great enough job of finishing off the paint, which is dis so sad because the, the blue is so nice on the figure like if the, this is a really beautiful looking blue it's just a shame that it doesn't quite doesn't quite cover the figure as much as it should be so let's go back to this hand so you can go ahead and remove the hand here 
pop that right off the socket and replace it with the clear, slightly clear hands just to show you how it works. I, to me, like, I feel like the black should have been a little darker here, like even the peg should have been black and maybe the top of the palm should have been black and then it translucents, the translucency of the clear be gradual. Instead, what you get is a very stark, like right at the wrist portion, it cuts right off and then you immediately get clear plastic, which again, doesn't quite look, it, it's not so bad when you have the hand up, but when you have the hand down, you can really see how it's so drastically different from the rest of the arm. This side's not too bad because really the arm itself is already clear plastic. They've just slowly covered it and gradually covered it in, in the blue paint. So it looks a little bit more consistent. Here on the other hand, it just looks like you got a painted arm and all of a sudden you've got this completely stark, slightly smoky, translucent, clear hand. And it's a little warped, which I'm sure we've already touched base on. Let's have a look at her posability. Her head rotates all the way around. You've got a universal joint, so it hinges up and down as well. Uh, the arms hinge outward, as well as a full rotation going there. You've got your bend at the elbow, a rotation in the forearm, and the same sort of thing for the wrist as well. Hinges back and forth. The upper torso is a ball joint, nothing in the waist area of the figure. A forward back and out on the legs, just a little bit stiff unfortunately. And you got your swivel in the thigh, double hinge on your knee. Nothing in the boots because it's just painted. And then you've also got the hinge in the foot and a slight ankle pivot. This one foot on the other hand, not quite on the other hand, on the other leg, um, doesn't seem to want to really move all that much and it's slightly warped so I might actually have to heat it just to kind of get it back into place. There you have Invisible Woman. Good or bad. You know, it's it could have been a lot better. It could, could drastically have been a lot worse as well. But I feel like I'm, I'm disappointed because I really wanted to get this figure in and this, this figure I think is an exclusive after all. It might have been Walgreens. Um, I picked this actually up at EB Games, where EB Games at times you can go in, and it's really a rare gem of a store here in Canada. You can go there, and periodically they'll have exclusives that you can't you can't find normally here in Canada. That's where I ended up picking her up. And uh, again, I really want to love this figure a lot more than I did, but like the paint is just disastrous. Come on, man! Come on. On the other hand, surprisingly enough, Herbie comes across really do done well. I mean, there's, I mean, a lot of it you could say is plastic, so it's very easy to paint that. It's really only the center portion, which actually almost looks like it's molded in this plastic color rather than painted. The paint's very clean on it, but again, you could chalk it up to the fact there's really not a lot of paint on him to start off with. I like that there's the included plug socket on the back side of the figure. You can take him off the display stand, but as you can probably guess it, he doesn't really stand. He, he just kind of sits on his tripod legs. And if you get him just right, he stands perfectly fine, but it makes no sense really having the figure just standing on the ground. You of course want to be having him levitating as well. Uh, his face sculpt, if you could call it a face, is done pretty nicely. Not nearly the wreckage that's over there with the Invisible Woman. He actually comes across quite clean. And very pristine, in fact. His articulation is very limited. That's about all you can really do with the figure. He just sits on a ball joint. So, I mean, you can get some interesting, slight angled poses if he's confused with something. Again, his head moves up and down, rotates all the way around. And uh, then you can go ahead and just get him back on the... Right up the keister, you can get him back on the stand. And uh, again, he stands quite well, as he should, because he is, after all, on a clear post. Again, the set is good, and uh, kind of always wanted a Herbie, so I'm happy for that. But unfortunately, I just again feel like the Invisible One rushed, corners cut, maybe not completely realized as to what they wanted to do with the figure, or they had good intentions with the figure, and I just so happened to get one that has just the bad egg of the, just bad egg of the lot. I got the one that has the bad paint on the legs, and again, the hand is just a little bit awkwardly painted, doesn't quite gel with the rest of the arm. Other than that, the face is good, and I really like the blue, just wish that the blue was a little bit more finished. That's the kind of the takeaway from this review. Unfinished blue. 
Today, though, we were checking out the Marvel Legends Invisible Woman along with Herbie. Get her to properly stand. If you guys like this video, certainly hit it with a like. If you haven't had a chance to subscribe to this channel yet, that little subscribe button is down below. Just click it. It's as easy as that, and you won't miss future videos coming onto this channel. A lot of people also say, can you do Marvel Legends reviews? I never see Marvel Legends reviews on this channel. Actually, you do, um, but so often they get buried by other video content, because I'm always dumping new content on this channel, that there probably are Marvel Legends reviews. They're just a little bit further down. So one couple people have asked, can you do the Spider-Man Homecoming wave that had the build of wings for Vulture? I've actually already done those reviews, so what I would probably say is either go on to the main channel, the main channel homepage, and look up, or even just in the search area of YouTube, just type in this channel's name, Review Spot, and then type in the Marvel Legends, and you'll probably see a whole ton of them that you probably didn't see before. Or one better, you can also head over to the Marvel Legends playlist, and everything I've ever all, all ever done is actually in there in the playlist, so you can check that out as well. As always, guys, thanks for watching, as you always do. I'll see you next time.